It was a shocking, very upsetting scene at the Olympics earlier today when a female Italian boxer chose to abandon her bout with an Algerian competitor who had reportedly previously tested positive for elevated levels of testosterone back in 2023, which disqualified this person from that year's championships. Take a look at your screen. This was the scene before the Italian boxer withdrew just 40 seconds 46 seconds, look at this, look at this, into the match. The Italian boxer was distraught after the bout, saying that she felt a severe pain in her nose and said enough, never been that hit that hard ever. And keep in mind, you know, these are the same Olympics that mock Christianity in the opening ceremony, the same Olympic Games where anti-Semitic fans chanted Heil Hitler during the Israeli national anthem. This is exactly what advocates of protecting women's sports have been warning about the whole time. And while some sports governing bodies have taken steps to prevent horrific scenes like this, not all have. It's up to people who care about this issue to step up and make a difference. For example, in the state of South Dakota, they were among the first in the country to pass a law banning men from competing in women's sports. The governor that signed that bill, Christy Nome, joins us now. I mean, whatever happened to, you know, equal rights for women, and it was called Title IX, is it... Is it so politically incorrect to acknowledge a basic fact that, generally speaking, and I do mixed martial arts, and I promise you there are professional mixed martial art artists that will kick my you-know-what. But, uh, you know, but isn't it generally fair to say that men physically, biologically, are stronger generally than women generally? Yes, absolutely, Sean. There's no doubt about that, and science proves that. What's interesting to me is that Kamala Harris has been ex uh, silent all day long on this issue. We had a man beat up a woman on international TV, and people celebrated it, and she never once spoke out. She's the leader of the Democratic Party in the United States of America, and she never said a single word today about it. So this is abuse, and we have the Olympics celebrating men beating up women. It's wrong, and we need to have our leaders call it out. So I'm very proud that in South Dakota we did pass the strongest bill in the nation to protect women's sports, to make sure that women had the chance to compete, and we aren't going to let mediocre men take away opportunities from our extraordinary women. That's what we believe in South Dakota. I would hope that the entire country would back us in that and that our president would do that as well. What do you make of the Olympics overall? Heil Hitler during the, the national anthem of Israel during a match, uh, then the opening ceremonies mocking Christianity? You know, it just might be me, but I haven't been able to watch it. Ever since I saw the the performance of the opening ceremonies in the Last Supper, it just, um, I figured I had better things to do and, and more important things to do. I, our athletes have worked so hard to be there and to compete, and I love the opportunity that they have, but it's been hard to watch something that should be an opportunity to celebrate those who pursue excellence, and instead they're turning it into a political agenda and a political statement. And that's what I think is so unfortunate in this country today. We should be celebrating our young men. We should be celebrating our young women, the differences and the extraordinary opportunities that they all have to compete, but we certainly should not be, you know, blurring the lines and making political statements like we see this Olympics doing. So a lot of flip and flopping and flailing since she became, Kamala Harris became the presumptive Democratic nominee, mandatory gun buyback, oops, I changed my mind, uh, fracking, oops, I changed my mind, Medicare for all, uh, no private health insurance, oopsie daisy, changed my mind, Green New Deal, oops, she co-sponsored, changed my mind. Do you remember this ad when John Kerry, I voted for the $87 billion before I voted against it? Remember him? And he flipped and flopped. This was a pretty famous ad. Which direction would John Kerry lead? Kerry voted for the Iraq War, opposed it, supported it, and now opposes it again. He bragged about voting for the $87 billion to support our troops before he voted against it. I would think that this is really, when the time comes, there's a lot of fertile ground for the Trump campaign. What's your reaction? Well, she's by far the most extreme candidate that's been nominated by the Democratic Party in the history of our nation. But what I would say, Sean, is I don't believe Kamala has even spoken to what her new position is on all these policy issues. What we've seen is 
uh, statements put out by staff. We've seen statements put out by her campaign, but she hasn't said a single word. She hasn't done an interview. She hasn't said what she believes. So she's the same person that she's always been for years. Uh, she has been extreme on all these issues. Uh, she does not hold the beliefs of the United States of America to heart and want to defend our freedoms and liberties. And that's what I hope the American people really see before we get to Election Day. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, Governor Noem, we appreciate you uh, being with us as always. Uh, thank you.